Welcome back. You're not watching the Lifestyle segment on the weekend show brought to you by Holocron Popcorn. I don't know where our popcorn is today, but it's good to have you <laughs> back, Didi. Thank you. you it's good, good to be back. You know, uh, I, I want to say this. You, you, so there's something different. Okay. You have earrings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks to my mom. <laughs> thanks to your mom. How is she? I've been bullied into it. <laughs> talking <laughs> about moms and parents, we'll be talking about eye care today mm. and the myths around it. Now, for a couple of years, I had the wrong prescription, and so I thought that maybe something was wrong with my eyes. It was when I left Nigeria at some point in my life, I now went for new tests and got proper prescription. I was like, oh, so this is what I have been missing. Wow. Exactly. And so that was a problem which we used to face. But returning to Nigeria a couple of years ago, I found that we now have the specialized machines mm -hmm. and better ways of doing it. But you know what? My prescriptions were wrong. Why? At some point, I had crammed. You know the stuff oh, they write on yeah. the walls. I knew <laughs> what it was. So whenever I go, I'm like, oh, so I'll just say mm -hmm. from my head. I didn't know I was doing myself. So that's why, you know, you tell uh, an African parent something, they'll say, you think you're doing me, you're doing yourself. yourself. <laughs> I was doing myself. Which is why today we have a specialist who will talk to us about eye care. There are so many myths around it and how to take care of our eyes, how to take care of our glasses. And I think that would help our health. Um, generally and so it's my pleasure to introduce this guest who does a lot of amazing stuff I know her from the global shippers community where she's the current um, curator but she also wears so many other shoes so joining us we have we have a doctor princess Ifo Maike good morning and welcome to the show so she is a public health optometrist the CEO princess vision eye clinic limited Abuja a national advocacy secretary Nigerian optometric association Thank you so much for having me. Welcome Thank to the show, coming. Princess. So let's start with some myths. When I was growing up, I was told that if I wear my glasses consistently, my eyesight will get better. Over 30 years mm. later, I'm still changing glasses. Do glasses make your eyesight get better? Or is it like wearing high heels and when you take it off, you return to your normal height? I like how you use that. <laughs> so the thing about glasses is it depends on the type of condition that uh, um, you're treating, you're being recommended for. So if, for example, you have myopia, which is genetic, which means you got it from either of your parents or even grandparents, the glasses, so when you're not wearing the glasses, you're uncorrected. When you are wearing the glasses, you are corrected. So it's just like the same analogy you use. When you remove it, it's just like you're removing your heels. You go back to your status quo, your height. Now, there are also cases where glasses are given to help in terms of maybe for children, maybe muzzle for those that have crossed eyes, in terms of to help for straightening, for proper alignment and all. So glasses helps improve your vision because it gives you a balanced vision, it gives you a clearer vision as against when you have that uncorrective refractive error that comes with its own discomfort of blurred vision or headaches or tired eyes. So glasses do work, actually. Mm. So keep using yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the longest uh, time, we've been told that sitting too close to the television or using mm. your digital devices for like an extended period of time could damage your eyes. Now, is there any truth to that claim? And what can we do? Because we use our phones a lot uh, these days. Like, yeah. So what can we do now to you know, help protect our eye health while using these digital devices? So for sitting too close to the TV, Generally, sitting too close or sitting far away from the television is mm. also not good mm. because when you're sitting far away from the television, you're unconsciously going to strain to see what is there. And when you're also too close to the TV, you're also going to strain. Now, there is a trick on how will I know the distance to yeah. stay and all. Just not to go into the, like, the mathematics and all. Usually, we'll say going by the vertical um, distance of the TV. So let's assume the vertical distance of the TV is 18 inches. Multiply by six, this is mathematics, sorry. But you get about 108 inches or 110 inches, which is like nine feet away. So that means the smaller the TV, the shorter the distance. The longer the TV, that is in terms of the vertical distance, the farther away you're going to see. So that is why most times, if you have, in quotes, good vision, and you go to a cinema where you know we have big screens, if you stay very close, you won't even be comfortable, except to go back as against someone, for example, that has maybe myopia that would prefer to stay closer to see. Okay. Now, talking about digital devices, this is the era of digital technology and all, and it's pretty much indispensable at this point not to use digital devices to do your work. Even, 
I think across every field, even as medics also, we also use that. But we'll also say that too much of everything is bad. So prolonged um, use of your screen definitely will not, um, will I say in quotes, um, give you bad vision, but it's also going to cause some um, kind of eye strain, discomfort, headaches, blurry vision, because it's just like you're sitting in that position for a long time. So what happens when you're using digital devices for long or your laptop? Your eyes are converging at this point. So when you say it for a very long time, your brain knows that, uh-uh, I'm meant to like, be going forward and backwards. So why are you keeping me in this position for a very long time? You now tend to start having headaches, blurry vision, and all. So that is why we always advocate for people to take breaks intermittently, what we call the 20-20-20 rule, which means for every 20 minutes of work, you look away 20 feet, which means like 6 meters away for 20 seconds. Now I have an issue with the 20 seconds because it won't work depending on how intense you are with digital devices. So if you're working, for some people, when I tell them how many hours you spend on the digital device, they'll tell you, ha, ah, two, four, seven, like they are, except when they are sleeping. So 20 seconds is not going to work for that person for 20 minutes. So I usually say, okay, so do for every 30 minutes of work, you do five minutes of break. So that five minutes of break can be, can step up from your chair, walk around, with your colleagues. If you know you're not going to be tempted to sleep, you can rest your head backwards, just close your eyes so that your eyes readjust and you come back. Okay, so then it's also okay. Okay, no, continue. Please. And it's also advisable also to get like um, lenses that will help in terms of the anti glare that comes from digital devices that also help to give those strains. Because what gives the strain is the blue light that is emitted from digital devices, whether it's your smartphones, your tablets, projectors, or what have you. So it's also advisable whether you have eye issues in terms of whether you need glasses or not, it's advisable to also get one of these lenses, whether the blue cut filter lenses or the anti-reflective transition lenses. I mean, the eyes are doing the work, so better to take care of them when I'm, you can. I'm actually learning so much. And we'll come to the science of it very soon, but back on the mix. We, I, I remember at some point growing up, some I heard that eating too much Gary could drain your eyesight. Are there specific meals and foods people eat that could affect their eyesight? So for Gary, is very funny. So the thing about Gary is, the issue is when it is under-processed or not properly processed. Ah, wahala. Yes. What does so, that mean? <laughs> so what, what it means is, cassava flour, that is Gary, when um, ha contains a very toxic substance known as the cyanide. So okay. if that Gary is not properly processed, that means it has high level of that cyanide, which is also toxic. So aside the fact that it's also going to damage your vision on the long run, your, your health is also at risk because it's not just your eyes that the cyanide is going to affect. So that is why we also like what pretty much is also very difficult for you to say um, whether this gary is processed or not. So the best, um, let's say the best um, coping mechanism would be to reduce the quantity. So don't take too much of gary. This <laughs> one is safe side because you wouldn't know which mm. one is properly processed or not. Another one for you. Um, so we, and this is especially for young kids out there who want to become pilots. We're told you need 20-20 vision. Can kids who wear glasses um, end up being pilots in future? Of course, definitely. So the thing about um, most occupations is, regardless of whether you have 20-20, so 20-20 vision is like your central vision, is one aspect of your vision. We have the night vision, we have the central vision, we have the color vision. So color vision, for example, if you cannot see the traffic lights. So regardless of whether you have good 2020 vision and you don't have color, so it's just like everything has to be okay. But the most important thing is glasses or whatever um, treatment modality that's given to that person should help the person to still see. So we're not trying to exclude people, maybe because of you don't see well without glasses. So it's not to exclude people. Is to more or less include people in different occupations. And that is what most organizations don't understand. Most people will say, if you cannot see very well with your natural eyes, they don't even want to talk about glasses and all. Especially when we talk about the paramilitary and all. Except if you have entered and your vision goes bad. But if you're going, if your vision is not good like this, they don't want to talk about your using glasses and all, which is quite exclusive at the long run. Yeah, mm. because you see that in sports, yeah. basketball, football, and others. But right now, I see that they've started yeah. um, accommodating some of that. Um, but you mentioned colored vision. Is that the same thing as color blindness? Um, can you tell us a little more about that? Okay. So color vision is a kind of test that is used to ascertain the level of color deficiency that someone has. So if someone has a color deficiency, it could be red, blue, yellow, that is now when you see the person is color blinded, depending on the extent of that test. So for some people, when they look at color red, they are seeing just brown, while some people they are just seeing only black and white. So for people like that that are seeing black and white, 
There are also lenses that help, which is pretty much like high advanced technology, so that can also do the job they are doing. So whenever you go to visit maybe your optometrist or eye care professional, it's important to go beyond just reading the alphabet, because that is just checking your central vision. So your color vision, because people beat the traffic lights, and they'll tell you, I did not see it. And you think they are joking, but they didn't see it. So maybe they are just seeing white, they are, they are seeing black. So it's also important to have a holistic and um, comprehensive eye exam. Don't okay. use that so as an excuse. <laughs> they will arrest you. <laughs> so going back to what Andy uh, said about food, I hear that carrots and onions are really good for eyesight. I don't know how true that is, but thank God you're here. You clear that up. And are there any other foods or nutrients that are beneficial to eye health? So generally, carrots, onions are good for the health, not just the eyes. Okay. Yeah. So the issue is, if you're eating maybe carrots or onions, it's going to pretty much just help to maintain your vision, but it's not going to improve your vision, especially if you have a need for glasses. So if you're not seeing well as a result of maybe some kind of refractive error, which is like maybe myopia, hyperopia, and you're saying, I'm going to eat carrot and onions, you're just pretty much deceiving yourself at the long run. Then going forward on um, what we should eat that should help our eyes, green vegetables, but it's always very difficult. So for those that cannot get, people, those that don't like to eat fruits or vegetables, you can get them as supplements from your optometrist or your eye care partition, and they can recommend that for you. And mm -hmm. you can get it and take at recommended doses. Okay, okay, let's talk about the science of it. Um, over the course of this discussion, you've mentioned things like myopia, hyperopia, I don't know if that's right. Um, I, I also know of astigmatism, and then there's glaucoma. Can you tell us what um, some of these terms? So, myopia, hype. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, myopia is commonly known as short sightedness. Okay. Pretty much, the person can't see images that are further away from them, they, are, they tend to be blurry except they move closer. This is correctable through lenses. So it's pretty much not a big deal when people try to run away from wearing glasses because such simple glasses will help you give you better and clearer vision. That is for myopia. In most cases, it is also genetic when, um, like I mentioned earlier, maybe your parents or your grandparents or pretty much the ones in your family. Now, because of with the advent of technology and people always on their screens, there's also a tendency for people to start having what we call acquired myopia gradually when you're always staying in this position for a very long time. Because if, for example, you have good vision, what I mean by that is pretty much you're seeing very far now, and you're not staying in a position that is near for a very long time, your brain is pretty much what sees your eye interpret. So your brain is going to adjust to make you comfortable. And that adjustment means it's also changing the power of your eyes. So if your brain sees that you like staying in this position for a very long time, it's going to change to accommodate you. That is now where you start having acquired myopia. You'll be saying, I was seen two years ago very well at far. But now, it's not clear again at far. Mm. Now for hyperopia. Hyperopia is dicey. But the layman would say it means long-sightedness. But when we go into the scientific um, classifications, we have hyperopias or hyperopes that don't see far. So they also mimic as if they are short-sighted, but they are not short-sighted. So they have different classifications of hyperopia, latent, manifest, facultative. I won't go into that. But that is what your um, optometrist will tell you at the point of examination. So some people will say, I'm not seeing well, I'm short-sighted. You might have hyperopia. Now, astigmatism has to do with a focusing issue. So astigmatism can come either with myopia or hyperopia, as the case may be. Now, what happens in the case of astigmatism is there's a case of rivalry in your brain trying to decipher which image I am seeing. So when we're talking about myopia or hyperopia, one image is formed at the back of the brain, whether it is formed in front for myopia, where the person cannot see at far, or it is formed pretty much at the back, in quotes, if the um, person is long-sighted. But for astigmatism, the images are duplicated into two. So just like you have two images at the back of the eye, and if this, so when I say you should read something from the visual acuity chart, this first image is seen a letter B, the second image is seen a letter P, it's seen a look alike. So the brain doesn't know like, is it that B or P, I don't know. So that is why most times if um, someone is reading on the chart, it's a person says, it's O, no, it's C. When you now put corrective lenses for astigmatism, the person has said, oh, it's actually C. What happens is it brings those two, two images together, fuses them at once, and places it at the right part at the back of the eye, which is called the retina. Then you're not sure that, okay, this is it. Then for glaucoma, glaucoma is w the leading cause of irreversible blindness globally. It's very tricky because in the early stages, there's no symptom, there's no sign. 
And because of you might be tempted to say you're seeing very well in terms of central vision, glaucoma affects from your peripheral vision. So you might be seen, you might be seen from here to Sokoto, but you have glaucoma because it comes from the side. So it eats up your peripheral. You will think you're still seeing where you don't have issues because there's no symptom, there's no. Then at the later stage, when it's now very late, that is now where you notice that. Because when it finishes from here, it comes to the center. And by then, it's pretty much late. So that's why we also advocate for people to have routine eye examinations. Mm. That is when they will now tell you, okay, you have this. And if there are other treatment modalities, you'll be advised accordingly. Okay. So um, let's talk laser eye surgery. Now, this is a procedure that a good number of people are afraid of because of how delicate the eye is. So could you share um, some risk? or benefits to laser eye surgery and what who you know who can uh, go through that procedure like what patient or candidate can go through that so for laser eye surgery to answer first who can go for that kind of surgery yeah. will be dependent on your stage and type of condition that you have okay. who your optometrist or your ophthalmologist will advise at that particular point so there's no generalized rule for that it's mm. individual and specific now for surgeries laser surgeries obviously are better because of technology and all, but it is not 100%. So just like every other surgery, it's also 50-50 in quotes. It, it might also have its own complications afterwards. So some people, even though the complications might not be much, it can also be severe depending on that. So once, you're, once it's a pretty much surgery, it does have that mindset that is 50-50. Then in terms of the benefits, it's faster, it's pretty much more reliable, especially for human errors and all but also very, very expensive. So it's not something that the average person can also afford. So there are different angles to actually look at that and tackle. But yes, if it's something that you're being recommended for, they will definitely advise you on that. And there are also other options that are manual that are also very good as well. Could you share more on those options? So manual options, if it's for laser zoom, is for um, cataracts. There are manual I was options. about to ask about cataracts <laughs> as well. So there are manual options for um, those that cannot afford it. Sorry, before sorry for interrupting you, but tell us about cataract before you tell us okay. about those op op other options you're talking about. So cataract is the opacification of the crystalline lens at the back of the eye. When I mean crystalline lens, so beyond at the back of the eye. So when you go for those that go and um, check their eyes, there's a part of the test where the doctor says, "I'm coming close to you to check the back of your eyes now." I may be wondering, how are you checking the back of your eye? What are you seeing? Through that lens, so the lens is transparent at the back of the eye. That is where the refraction takes place. When light passes, it's going to pass through there to the back of the eye. Now, if the lens is opacified, there are different causes of the lens being opacified. It can be seen now if it's age-related in elderly people. It could be traumatic. Maybe there was a blow or there was an accident. It could be solar or radiational. For those that will be tempted to be looking at eclipse of the sun when it comes out, or for welders that do their welding mm. jobs without that. So there are different classifications of that. So once it's opacified, light cannot pass through at the back of the eye. Pretty much at that point, the person is said to be blind. But the good part about it is that it has a treatment or a management procedure which has to do with cataract surgery about 10-15 minutes where the um, natural lens is removed and now replaced with an artificial one that is clear. So for that one now, you can have the focal emulsification, which can be manual or the laser. But it depends on the patient's budget at the time. Okay. So there are some people that believe that uh, routine checkups aren't necessary when you don't have any discomfort, you don't feel pain, a.k.a. me. <laughs> so <laughs> I see a lot of them squinting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so but how important now are routine checkups, particularly when you don't feel discomfort or you've never had any eye issues? Routine checkups are very, very essential, not just for your eyes, for your body. So the thing is, for most sight-threatening diseases, like I've mentioned, like glaucoma, you won't know you have it. It might not, it can be genetic, and it might not be genetic. So if you're waiting for when you're going to have that discomfort, it might just be too late. And it not be a situation of, had I known, I would have gone to go and check, especially when you have the well without to go and check, and you don't check. So routine eye checkups, as well as body checkups, generally are advisable. Now, it depends on the ages. So pretty much for you, you can say every two years, you check your eyes. So if you check your eyes this year, they tell you it's okay. Then you know that you're okay till 2025. Then usually for, uh, except so the, your um, routine eye checkups or pretty much your eye checkups depends on the state of your eyes as at when it was checked. 
So if it was checked now and there's no issues, they will give you to tell maybe next two years, next 18 months. If there's an issue, they might tell you next six months, next one year. So it depends on the individual as at the time of examination. But it's very important. So after now, I think I should be seeing you in the clinic on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody should be yes, have to. everybody. Let's mm, talk about teary eyes. And so sometimes you just see that your eyes are teary or sometimes they are itchy. So what causes the release of fluids from, um, from the eyes and the other times where you just find your eyes are quite itchy? So for... T um, our tackle, okay, so for tearing and, and itching, they are like the most common symptoms for anything that has to do with the eyes. So itching, tearing, redness, which is also very tricky. Now for tearing, too much screen time as well will cause tearing, um, for you to um, cause them um, tearing. This is because when you are using your digital devices, you don't blink as frequent as you're meant to blink, which is involuntary, it's not your making. Your brain knows that this is the time to focus. And because of the pixels and all in digital devices, you need more focusing than if you're reading from a paper. So by that, you don't blink as frequent as you're meant to blink. And the eyes, that the front of the eye that has the cornea, is meant to be lubricated. So the only time pretty much your um, eyes should be dry is if you have serious dry eye disease or if you're dead. So your brain knows that this person is living. That is now when you will not, they will not be stimulated. So tears will be stimulated now through um, signals. You will not start producing tears in quantity, not in quality, because the eyes have to be lubricated. That is for that. They will also have television from spectacle correction. So if you're using glasses that are not your prescription, it can cause some cause sort of eye strain. And the only way for the eyes to pretty much give you a sign that are not just comfortable is for you to start tearing. Mm. Then tearing also comes from, depends on the environment, your environmental factors. So if you're in a place that is too windy, or if you have allergies of some sort, you're definitely going to react because allergies most times has to do with maybe nasal and the nose and the eyes are connected so once you don't have that sensation on your nose the eyes must respond as well because they are like sympathetic of each other <laughs> the reason why i'm laughing about <laughs> allergies is that it reminds me of when you're cutting onions, onions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How, well, and so what's the relation between onions, onions and, and the onions. eyes yeah. yeah so onions has a, um, a particular chemical in it that once you cut the onions it stimulates your, your tear glands and you start tearing but it's not the case for everybody it's just a situation where some people are more sensitive than the other and this applies to me so i, I don't even have to cut onions so if you <laughs> cut onions here and i'm outside from outside i'm tearing but i love to eat onions so it's <laughs> inevitable <laughs> as well. okay um on behalf of the women i have to ask makeup how does it affect your eye health, particularly when using like the eyeliner, the mascara, and all of that? Or is it when you use it excessively? Is that when there's a problem? Not just excessively. I think the, the bone of contention is the application and the removal. Now, I'm very particular about um, the eyelashes, fixing eyelashes, mm. and putting mascara. Now, the, the tear glands are located on the eyelids. So when you're using maybe like um, mascaras or whatever you're putting there, you tend to block the dots of that, which can also lead to infection. So that is one. Then when we now go into the traumatic side, where if the person that is even fixing the lashes is not properly experienced, or even if the person is properly experienced, human errors occur, and you might not have abrasion to the cornea. So if you have ab the, the cornea is the transparent part of the eye that if I turn to the side, you're going to look side at it. Side eye, bombastic yeah. side <laughs> eye. <laughs> bombastic side <laughs> eye. So if something happens to that place and it's opacified, you're talking about cornea transplant, just from simple makeup. So that is what anything has to do with your fixing lashes, your doing this, is or even uh, even um, contact lenses. So that is why contact lenses. If you come to me and you say you need contact lenses, first thing I look at is your fingers. So I look at you and said, if it's for cosmetic purposes, I would definitely discourage you from that person if you have long fingers. Because you're putting that on that cornea, which is also very sensitive. So any small abrasion, that is, is opacified. That is talking about blindness already, just from cutlets of chakra that you want to do. So if I look at your, your nails, so if your nails are long, nah. Then if you're using spectacle corrections and maybe you're tired of wearing glasses and you say you want contact lenses, uh, uh, Definitely, I'm also going to check your fingers and your height because your fingers are our highest carrier of germs. So, if I look and you have an alternative, which is glasses, I'll most definitely tell you about that. Talking about contact lenses, I remember when um, I got my proper specifications for my glasses, I asked if um, I could also do contact lenses. Now, I'm extremely terrified of putting my hands in my eyes. I see people wear contact lenses mm -hmm. as superstars and heroes. 
But I was told that I had, I also had astigmatism, and so they didn't advise that I should use contacts. Tell us about when people can and should use contacts and when they shouldn't. So for generally, every the, anything that, has, that is going into your eyes as a form of medication or treatment modalities has its own examinations. So when I see people maybe getting contact lenses online, it might not even be a fit for that because contact lens application and use has its own specific test that must be done to ascertain if you're fit for it. Because for you to use contact lens, you definitely should not have dry eye disease. If you have dry eye disease, you're putting yourself in trouble because you can go blind from using contact lenses. Now, the thing about contact lenses as well is there are definitely contact lenses that help with astigmatism, but it's also very... Um, it's tiring as well because there's a lot of work as against take your glasses, put it on, contact lenses, you have to wash your hands, do this, um, the hygiene stuff, you have to put it. You also have to ensure that when you're putting contact lenses now, you won't be using your screen as often as you're using your glasses. Because of that, you're not blinking as frequent to lubricate the eyes. So it just has its own... Um, for the cosmetic part, yes, it's good for those that are usually tired of wearing glasses and all, but it also has its own, let's say, complications that the wrong one when not properly used. What about people who, s some people tell you there's some contact lenses you can sleep with. Some other people tell you that you should never sleep with your contact lenses. And how often should you change your contact lenses? So there are different kinds of contact lenses. They have daily extended wears, which after every day you remove. They have the ones of two years and all. And there are also contact lenses that you can sleep with, but this will be advised based on what you're doing. They also have like um, cosmetic contact lenses that they use for um, in the film industry and all. So each contact lens is you're going to be advised. So once they're advising you, within yourself, you know whether you can keep up with all these protocols or you just like find your square root at the end of the day. Dr. Princess, if I like it. thanks for the free consultation <laughs> because we can keep her on. And I think next mm -hmm. week we should do either a chiropractor or a dentist exactly. because we've learned so, so much yeah. from you. But before we go, could you give us um, essential practices that we can do and incorporate to maintain good eye health? Number one has to be reduce screen time. I think everybody is guilty of that, even myself, yeah. So reduce screen time, very, very important. Then your diet as well should be balanced. So it's not we're not saying eat too much vegetable or be you eat too much food. It should be balanced. A little bit of everything at the right time. Drink enough water. You cannot overemphasize the importance of water, not just for your eye health, but for your general health as well. Routine eye examinations, like I said, I'm expecting you on Monday <laughs> for your routine eye checkup. So you cannot overemphasize how important it is for you to have those routines, not just your eyes, but your body as well. I saw a patient last week. She came to check her eyes. She's my patient. And her, this year was like after two years. She came with, she, when she entered the consultation room, she came with an envelope and brought it at photocopy. I said, what is this? She said that all her tests, this is like a routine check. So she's going stage by stage. Mm. This one is for eye. Everything is there. So some people are intentional about their health generally. Why some will wait till when there's an issue, which shouldn't be the case. Because prevention is always cheaper, better than cure. Mm. Thank you. How can we find you for people who want to patronize your eye service, the name and how you ca we can find you online and offline? Okay. So um, Princess Vision Eye Clinic Limited, we are located at 12A Anon Plaza along Apule Legislative Quarters Road, Gudu District, Abuja. On social media, Princess Vision Eye Clinic Limited as well, both on Instagram and on Facebook, and personally, Star Optometrist on Instagram and on, on Twitter. Yeah. Okay. Princess E.K., thank you so much for sharing your mm -hmm. knowledge, your wealth of knowledge with us. Um, thank you for the advocacy work which you do and the work you're doing um, with, the of, um, with the Global Shapers community. I saw you guys um, visit the Vice President last week. Yeah. Keep on doing the good job and well done. We'll take a quick break. When we return, more for you on The Weekend Show. Don't go away.